وأنزل الله عليك الكتاب والحكمة وعلمك ما لم تكن تعلم وكان فضل الله عليك عظيما الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن وثناء جميل وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين First of all, it's not with Dad Shahid. I have to quit the Sheikh. Mashallah, it's Brother Shahid. Secondly, I always begin this introduction. I always see, as I see, like a look of disappointment across faces across the room. I'm not going to take too much time. Inshallah, Ustad Uthman Hassan is going to come. Don't worry, Inshallah. First of all, I want to thank Masjid Al Furqan in Manchester for hosting us and for being so hospitable. Mashallah, we were here this morning. I saw some brothers this morning, Mashallah. They look tired now, but they were here this morning. And then for having us again as well. And there's not many masajid on this tour that we're actually visiting twice. So I'm very pleased and I feel honored and uh, privileged to be here. And I've seen this masjid on YouTube, Mashallah. Sheikh Muhammad Ali, Hafidhullah, is just as energetic and friendly and warm and welcoming in person as he is online. So he's hosted us very well. Barakallah fikum. Second thing I want to say is I want all the brothers and including the sisters as well, although we can't see you, including the sisters and the brothers to inshallah get their phones out because I want to do a very short activity with you. It's not going to take too long inshallah. Of course, I can't force you to get your phones out. So if you don't want to, I, I can't help that. But there was, what's it called? FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. If you don't want to get your phones out, it's up to you. But you might miss out on something. I want everybody to go to a website, www amauacademy.com amauacademy.com forward slash UK tour UK tour is all one word this is a specific link that we've set up for this particular tour when you're on that inshallah and I'm I'll repeat it inshallah mashallah www.amauacademy that's a-c-a-d-e-m-y dot com forward slash UK tour. When you're on that website, I just want you to scroll down a little bit and you can see the list of cities that we're visiting. You can see on the list, there's London, Reading, Birmingham, Leicester. After that, we're all up north. There is Hyde, which is like 20 minutes away from here, right? Hyde? Hyde. Manchester, which is where we are now. Bradford, Nelson and Keithley which all the southerners say Keeley because there's no T in there. I don't know why you guys say Keithy up north, but it's Keithy, I've been told. So all of these locations, I highly encourage all of you brothers, if you can make it, then come please. It's not that far. I think the maximum is probably like an hour away from here, maybe a bit more than that, an hour and a half. And I always think if the teacher can travel that kind of distance to teach, then surely us students who are in need of the knowledge, then we should be able to travel that far, inshallah. So I'm looking forward to seeing you, especially tonight, but also in some of the other evenings, inshallah. And on that same website, there are details of what the times are. Now, don't put away your phones, because I also want you guys to do something very important on the same link, inshallah. Both brothers and sisters, if you scroll up to the top of that page, you will see a notification bell. I want you guys to click that bell. You don't have to type anything yet. You will see a pop-up. Who's done it? Who can see the pop-up? What, what do you guys see? If you go to the notification bell and you click on it, Okay, good. Subscribe, yeah? <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going to ask you to subscribe to something you don't know. So I'm now going to explain what AME Academy is about. First of all, just as a point of research for me, because we live in the UAE and we live in a bubble. We don't come to the UK often. Has anyone even heard of AME Academy? If you put your hands up, have you heard of it? Mashallah. 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 And keep your hands up if you're actually a student on AME Academy. Okay, Mashallah. I know this brother is here speaking to me earlier, mashallah. Okay. Anybody who wants to know about AMU Academy, I'm going to give you three minutes now, inshallah. AMU Academy is broken into three different sections. There is a self-development section. What is the self-development section all about? It is basically designed to help you improve yourself as a Muslim. It is made up of short courses taught by Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan and Ustad Muhammad Tim Humble, who unfortunately couldn't join us on this particular tour. Those short courses are on topics that, to be honest with you, you might not find many Islamic lectures on. For example, 
how to be more productive, how to wake up early and seize your day, how to control your mobile phone usage, what diet to choose, how to choose your diet, how to sleep according to the sunnah, how to eat according to the sunnah, how to homeschool your children, which is a big topic for many parents in this country, um, how to be a leader, how to communicate effectively, how to public speak, all of these courses you'll find there, plus many, many more. Of course, there's Islamic course as well, how to increase your iman, how to attain taqwa, etc. All of that is just one part of AMU Academy, the self-development program. The second part of AMU Academy is an Arabic program. We call it Arabic with AMAU. This is a program taught by Ustad Muhammad Tim Humble. May Allah protect him and preserve him and his family. He has designed a program. It took him two years to design. I'm not lying. Literally one and a half to two years to design. He's gone through the post of learning Arabic. He's then been teaching Arabic for many years. And he felt like the way that a lot of students know the Arabic nowadays is not the most ideal way. So he's come with a different concept, a very unique concept. And this program will start from the al letters of the alphabet. If you don't know how to read the letters of the alphabet, it's not a problem. We start there, inshallah. And it goes all the way through, bi'idnillahi, we hope to fluency across a span of two or three years. We're about six months into it. And mashallah, it's going on schedule so far. The last part of AMU Academy, I see some brothers here with their thobes and their hats and their note uh, pads and pens. We have a student of knowledge program. The student of knowledge program is taught by Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan and Ustad Muhammad Tim Humble, both of which teach Islamic sciences in a structured curriculum it takes you from the beginning and it leads you onto a like kind of like a scale of progression so you can increase your knowledge slowly because what happens a lot of the time to be honest with you is brothers who want to seek knowledge they end up on youtube and they watch one video and another video and another video and do one book and then jump to another book and jump to another book and there's no real progression so they do that for five or six years and i'm talking from experience here and they don't really get any knowledge so this program will actually take you from the beginning and actually increase your knowledge slowly in a systematic way that's the third part of AME Academy. The good news about AME Academy is all of it is on-demand videos. It is all self-paced, meaning if you were to sign up, you would get access to all of the videos that have been recorded over the last six, seven months, and you can just take them at your own time. Some brothers might be able to do four hours a day. Some might be able to do only half an hour a day. It doesn't matter. You're in control. You do your own videos whenever you can, inshallah. Now... Anybody who wants to learn more, this is not signing up to AMU Academy. We're not signing you up to AMU Academy, don't worry. This is only if you want to learn more about AMU Academy, if you want to learn, learn more about what AMU you are doing, maybe the next time we come here, the tour, etc. then it's up to you. You can sign up to that mailing list. Again, this is free. This is not going to charge you anything. There's no credit card details here. It's just you can enter your first name, last name, and email address, and inshallah, you will then be part of our database and any kind of communication. Anytime we're coming back to the UK, we will notify you, inshallah. Final thing I want to say, just before I invite Ustad Abdurrahman Hassan onto the stage, inshallah, is one of the brothers, Jazahullah Khaylan, actually gifted these Mutum books. And he specifically said that if you guys want to give it out as prizes for people who get the questions right, then we can. So inshallah, I've been with Ustad Abdurrahman the last few days that he's been doing this tour. And just to give you guys a heads up, I think he's watching in the other room, but just to give you guys a secret, he's going to be asking you questions at the end. So make sure you guys are taking notes, not hard questions, but just questions on what he's covered. And he's picking people from the crowd as well. That's how he's doing it. He's not waiting for hands to be raised. He's actually picking people. But inshallah, if you answer correctly, then bi'idnillah, you have a good prize here, mashallah. Barakallahu feek. Jazakallah khairan. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Watlu alayhim تقبل ولم يتقبل من الآخر قال لا أقتلنك قال إنما يتقبل الله من المتقين لا بسطت إلي يدك لتقتلني ما أنا بباسط ما أنا بباسط لك إني أخاف الله رب العالمين إني أريد أن تبوء بإثمي إني أريد أن تبوء بإثمي وإثمك وإثمك 
ذَلِكَ فَتَكُونَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ فَطَوَّعَتْ لَهُ نَفْسُهُ قَتْلَ أَخِيهِ فَقَتَلَهُ فَقَتَلَهُ فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ غُرَابًا يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَبْحَثُ فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُرِيَهُ كَيْفَ يُوَارِي سَوْءَةَ أَخِيهِ قَالَ يَا وَيْلَتَا أَعْجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ أَعْجَزْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْغُرَابِ فَأُوَارِيَ سَوْءَةَ أَخِي فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن ولقد جاءتهم رسلنا بالبينات ثم إن كثيرا منهم بعد ذلك في الأرض لمسرفون الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to be speaking about the rights of the heart before I go into the rights of the heart إن شاء الله تعالى I just want to mention the the weight or the position that the heart has in our religion and how important that the heart is the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he told us that there is an organ inside the human body and this organ is the most important organ than any other organ in the human body. The Prophet, he told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, إِنَّ الْحَلَالَ بَيِّنٌ وَإِنَّ الْحَرَامَ بَيِّنٌ وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورٌ مُشْتَبِهَاتٍ لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ فَقَدْ اسْتَبْرَأَ لِدِينِهِ وَعِرْضِهِ وَمَنْ وَقَعَ فِي الشُّبُهَاتِ وَقَعَ فِي الْحَرَامِ كَالْرَاعِ يَرْعَى حَوْلَ الْحِمَى يُوشِكُ أَنْ يَرْتَعَ فِيهِ أَلَا وَإِنَّ لِمْكُلِّ مَلِكٍ حِمَى أَلَا وَإِنَّ حِمَى اللَّهِ مَحَارِمُهُ أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ This is what I want from the hadith. أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَةِ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ There is an organ inside the human body if this organ is upright and steadfast, the entire body is upright and steadfast. And if this organ is corrupt, the entire body is also what? It's all corrupt. So the king, the, the king of the body is what? The heart. Abu Hurairah, he said, Al-Qalbu Maliku Al-A'da Fa'in Taab Al-Malik Taabat Al-Junood Wa-Ra'ayah Wa'in Khabutha Al-Malik Khabutha Al-Junood Wa-Ra'ayah Abu Hurairah, he said, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhrin is his name, Abu Huraira. He said, he's a noble companion. He said that the heart is the king of the body. And if this king is upright and steadfast, the entire body is upright and steadfast. And also, if this king is filthy and evil, so is the body filthy and evil with it. So it follows the heart. So that's the first, inshallah ta'ala, virtue of the, the heart or the weight of the heart or the importance of the heart. The second thing to show you that the heart is very important is Al-Qalbu huwa mahallu al-Qur'an Where does the Qur'an settle? It's the heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says in the Qur'an وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينَ In this verse Allah tells us وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ أي القرآن The Qur'an is what? A revelation from Allah. Jibreel took it from Allah and he brought it to who? To Nabiullah Muhammad. When it came to the Prophet, where did it settle in the Prophet's body? The heart. 
directly to the heart. It wasn't written on a paper. It was in the heart straight away. Are we all together, brothers? And the Prophet alayhi, he wanted to memorize the Quran fast with Jibreel and he was trying to do it fast. Allah told him, لا تحرك به لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآن It is upon us. Leave it to us. We're going to pour the Quran into what? We're going to pour it into your, your heart. Okay? Also Allah says in another ayah, بَلْ هُوَ آيَاتٌ بَيِّنَاتٌ فِي صُدُورِ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ that the Quran is a what? Verses that are present in what? Fi suduri ladina utul alm. In the chests of the people of knowledge. And then the people of knowledge memorize the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? They memorize the Quran, they learn the Quran, they live by the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? So where does the heart go? Where does the Quran go into? The heart. So again, this shows us how important the heart is, right? I mentioned two so far, right? What was the first thing I mentioned? The importance of the heart. The heart is what? It's the king of the body, correct. What was the second? The qalb is what? The mahal al-Qur'an, sah? The third, inshaAllah ta'ala, is, it is, al, uh, the qalb is uh, the place Allah looks at, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The qalb, the heart, is what Allah looks at. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us in a hadith, an imam Muslim narrated in his sahih, min hadith Abi Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, إن الله لا ينظر إلى أجسامكم ولا إلى صوركم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم وأعمالكم. Allah does not look at how big your biceps and your triceps are. Allah doesn't look at how long and how short your beard is. Okay? Allah doesn't look at all of that. Not meaning that you don't let your beard grow. But I mean if you haven't been gifted a long beard or you've been given a small short beard or your color, your skin color or your hair or all of that which we give importance to, Allah doesn't look at all of that. What is it that He looks at? Allah looks at the person's actions and their hearts. And it's important to mention this hadith which says the action and the, the heart, which is that some people would say, they would argue, my heart is what? My heart is good. But if really your heart is good, it would change the way you act, right? Because Ar- Arabs, they say, Every vessel sweats what's inside it. For me to know if this Coca-Cola, which is not a good thing to drink, by the way, but for me to know this juice or this drink is hot or cold, do I have to put my finger in it? Can I know it from outside? Can I just know it from just grabbing it from outside? Can I? I can know the tea. If somebody brings me tea, I know if it's hot or cold from just grabbing it, right? Correct? So the same thing is when it comes to our actions. You can know from somebody's outside if their heart is also good. Are we all together, brothers? Yes. Does that make sense? So there's, it's not possible to disconnect the out from the in. There's a connection. There's a strong bond between the heart and the what? <clears throat> it spills to the heart. Well, it's in the heart, it spills to your limbs straight away. It goes to your limbs. Sah? Or else there's a deficiency in your heart which is not allowing it to go towards the limbs. So that's why you have to work hard on your heart more so that you do not fall short in your actions. Are we all together, brothers? Another thing that shows the weight of the heart is mahalunia, which is the fourth, right? The, the importance of the heart is that the heart is where the intention comes from. We all know that any action that you do, there has to be two things present, right? What are the two things that have to be there? Sincerity and what? Ittiba'u following the Prophet alayhi, alayhi salatu wasalam. So following the sunnah and sincerity, right? So the first one is sincerity, right? Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ so Allah is teaching us here that every action, what does Allah want from it? Sincerity. So where does sincerity come from? The heart. Again, that shows the importance of the heart. Sah? Are we all together, brothers? The Prophet sallallahu he said in the hadith, Umar ibn al-Khattab narrated this hadith, and Bukhari and Muslim and Ashabu Sunnah, they narrated it. 
And there's no other companion who narrated it from the Prophet except Umar. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مَا نَوَى فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا Some wording says يَتَزَوَّجُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ So this hadith إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Every action is based upon your intention. Where does the intention come from? The heart. The heart is important then. Are we all together? That's why the, Allah says in the Quran فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا This ayah tells us that the two conditions that are needed for the action is what? فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا means what? In accordance to the sunnah وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا It means what? Sincerity Sincerity and what does sincerity mean? إخلاصنا لله صف القلب من إرادة سواه فحذر يا فطن It means that there is no other motive in your heart. There is nobody else you have in mind when you're doing this action. It's purely for Allah's sake, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you're doing this action, you're looking at Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala. إخلاصنا لله صف القلب Clean from the heart, what? Cleanse from the heart, anybody else. You're not doing it so you can get a worldly gain from it. You're not doing it because you want fame from it. You're not doing it because you want publicity and recognition. Your goal from all of this is what? Allah Azza wa Jalla. Sah? It is to get closer to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. That's why the righteous people, when they do good deeds, they, they say to the people, we don't want your recognition. إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِي لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا إِنَّا نَخَافُ مِنْ رَبِّنَا and because of this good intention they came with And because of the good deed that they did Allah says Allah took care of them They're taken care of right So the heart is a place where The intention comes from Also the heart is what brothers Where taqwa comes from Are we all together Where's mahalu taqwa It's the qalb What's the evidence for that? The Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, At-taqwa ha-huna. At-taqwa ha-huna. At-taqwa ha-huna. He said it three times. If he said it once, it would have been enough, right? But he wanted to emphasize on it. So the Prophet said, Taqwa is here. Taqwa is here. Taqwa is here. And the hadith says, Fa'ashara ila sadri thalatha marrat. And he pointed towards his chest three times. Alayhi salatu. Alayhi salatu wassalam. This now, brothers, teaches us if taqwa, which is what is needed for us to inherit Jannah, tilka al-jannatu allati nurithu min ibadina man kana, taqiyya, the people of taqwa are going to inherit Jannah. They're also going to be protected from the hellfire. Wa in kum illa wariduha kana ala rabbika hataman maqadiyya, thumma nunajji alladhina taqaw, wa nadharu al-dhalimina fiha jithiyya. They're going to be protected from the hellfire, sah? Ahlu taqwa, they're going to be what? Protected from the hellfire. They're also going to be given Jannah. Are you guys not here today for that reason? That you want to get Jannah and be protected from the hellfire? Sah, inshallah. May Allah make us from the people of Jannah and protect us from the hellfire. That's our reason. We're all here, inshallah ta'ala. Then to attain that, you need to come with what? A taqwa. You need to fulfill this quality and this characteristics and this thing known as what? At-taqwa. Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said, At-taqwa is what? Al-khawf min al-jaleel, wal-amal bil-tanzeel, wal-rida bil-qaleel, wa sti'dadu liyawm al-rahil. Ali said, noble companion, radiyallahu anhu, he said, At-taqwa is four things. He says that you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You what? You fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second is, you act upon the revelation, the Quran and the Sunnah. Three, you are pleased with whatever Allah gives you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it's little. Four, you prepare for the day of departure. The day you're going to stand in front of Allah. You get ready for that day. And it could be any day. It could be what? It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be the next day, it doesn't matter. You are always ready. Maymun ibn Mehran was a great man. And this again, brothers, is my reason why I chose this topic, inshallah ta'ala. Haq uh, al in the series that I've been doing up and down the country regarding rights. Okay, we were talking, the whole tour was about Haq al Qalb, Haq al Ilm, Haq al Sunnah, Haq al Ulama, and all of this, these topics. Haq al Buyut, all of that. And the reason why 
this topic Haqqul Qalb is it touched me as I read in the kitab uh, the tabaqat of Ibn Sa'ad a story and this story is Maymun Ibn Mehran who was kana katiban li Umar Ibn Abdul Aziz he was a what? he was a writer for who? who is Umar Ibn Aziz? Umar Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is a rajul and fadil. He was a righteous man from Bani Umayyah. Sah? And he wasn't like the rest of them as well. Sah? Honorable man. And Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he mentions in his kitab, Talkhis al Habir, he says, وَكَانَ عُمَرُ بْنُ عَبْدِ الْعَزِيزِ لَا يُقَرِّبُ إِلَّا الْأَفَاضِلِ That was a quality of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. That only people who could be around him are people who are righteous. So Maymur ibn Mehran has to be, had to be good and righteous in the eyes of who? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz for him to bring him close. Maymun ibn Mehran, he grew old in age, he lost his eyesight, and he came to uh, his son, he said, my son, grab me by the hand and take me to Hassan al-Basri. I want to go to Hassan al-Basri. فَإِنِّي أَجِدُ فِي قَلْبِ غِلْضَةِ I find qaswatul al-qalb, my heart is not good. I need to go to who? Hassan al-Basri. Now I'll ask you guys this question. If your heart was hard, do you go to the people of knowledge to say, I need to fix this? Or do we only go to the doctors when we have a headache or physical pain? Does that make sense, brothers? Your heart has become weak and you're feeling baf in your iman. Do you really, really worry about this and say, you know what, I need to fix this, it's a problem? Or we don't, we just let it happen until Allah, what he mentioned in the Quran, Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim ma kanu yaksibun. Their heart has become Every time you do a sin, one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot. If the person repents and asks Allah for forgiveness, your heart will be cleansed. But if the person doesn't, the heart becomes what? Darkened and tainted fully. And so, The person cannot recognize the truth anymore. He can't recognize. Yeah, the heart is. So, Maymun ibn Mehran. He realized his heart was, a, was weakening. And he didn't want to be from the people Allah mentioned. Allah mentioned that they believed in Allah and they were not He didn't want to be from those people. What happened to these people? They became distanced from the remembrance of Allah for so long. That's when their hearts became tainted. He didn't want to be from those people. So what did he do? He said to his son, grab me by the hand, sir, father, and take me to Hassan al-Basri. Who is Hassan al-Basri that he wants to go to? Imam al-Dhahab in Sir Alam al in the tarjama of Hassan al-Basri, he said that Hassan was, uh, the description that was given about Hassan al-Basri was like, It's like he saw the akhirah, and he watched it, and he saw everything, and came back to the people to tell them about what he saw. صح? Anyone who knows Hassan al-Basri, and he's fasaha. فَإِن بغ... if he said, فَإِن طَقْطَقَتْ بِهِمُ الْبِغَالُ وَأَمْلَهَجْتْ بِهِمُ الْبَرَاذِينَ فَإِنَّ ذُلَّ الْمَعْصِيَةِ لَا تُفَارِقُ وُجُوهَهُمْ أَبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يُذِلَّ مَنْ عَصَى That's from his words. Beautiful words. At one point I used to, uh, when I came across that statement of Hassan al-Basri and uh, Zahabi regarding Hassan al-Basri, uh, when I saw it, I said to myself, you know what, I'm going to make my, uh, يعني, Whenever I read Hassan al-Basri's kalab anywhere, I'm going to write it in a book. A little book I have, I write all of his kalabs. And that alone can be reminders and lectures for people. Over 60 pages I wrote just on the kalam of Hassan al-Basri that was attributed to him. And we all together, brothers. So Maymur ibn Mehran said, I, Father, take me to this man. So his father said, his son said, okay, dad. He grabbed him by the hand and he was blind, so he took him. They walked, they knocked on the door of Hassan al-Basri. The servant of Hassan al-Basri, she said, man, who is at the door? He said, uh, Maymun, Maymun ibn Mehran is at the door. She said, ya shaykh as-su, ma abqaka fi hadha zaman as Oh, you evil man, why are you alive this evil time? She said, so he started to cry, Maymun ibn Mehran, from those words that she said. He wept so much that Hassan al-Basri came out on the crying. <laughs> so when he came, he said to him, come in. He sat down. Maymun said to Hassan, 
Hassan, he told, he said, I find my heart to be very hard. I have, I'm falling short in what is, what is needed from me, and I, I need you to help me. Hassan al-Basri put his head down for a little bit, and he looked at him and he said to him, قال الله تعالى الله سبحانه وتعالى he says أفرأيت إن متعناهم سنين ثم جاءهم ما كانوا يعدون ما أغنى عنهم ما كانوا يمتعون Allah says in these verses أفرأيت إن متعناهم سنين if we give them joy for a short period of time ثم جاءهم ما كانوا يعدون and then the death the thing that was promised for them which is death comes to them the things that they were enjoying and they were, in, they, they were focused on will not help them from meeting me and having to deal with me. Hassan then said to Maimun, I've said what I wanted to you. You can go now. Maimun cried until he fainted. When he woke up, Hassan said, you can go. And he left the room. The son said to his father, he said, Dad, is that, was that Maymu? Uh, was that Hassan? Was that Hassan al-Basri? He goes, yes. He said, I thought he was going to say more than that. He said, Wallahi, my son, you don't know what he said. Are we all together, brothers? Three verses from the Quran, that if you really understood what it is, my son, it would have left a, 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 an effect on your heart, which shows you, brothers, the Qur'an, the effect that it can have on someone's heart. صح? لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا خشوع comes from the heart. صح? Your heart would crumble from, from this. If a mountain gets affected, who's harder? Your heart, your heart or that mountain? Yeah? A mountain's harder. How is your heart not being affected by the Qur'an? It doesn't change you. It, you don't think over the verses and ponder and think to yourself, what are these verses saying? So brothers, all of this shows us the importance of the heart, but it does not show us yet the rights that the heart has. I'm going to mention one last point that shows the, the, uh, the importance of the heart, which is the heart of the believers is a vessel where Allah pours things in. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us in a hadith, Inna lillahi aniyah. Imagine this, Allah has utensils. You know how we have cups and pots and pans in our house where we pour things in. Allah has that on this earth. Inna lillahi aniyah. The Prophet then said, Wa Allah. Allah's utensils are what? It's the heart of every righteous slave. May Allah make us from the people of what? Oh, may Allah make us from the people of khair and righteous people. Their hearts are what, brothers? It's a place Allah pours things in it. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Al-Wabil al-Sayyib, and I also saw it in his kitab, Miftahu Dari Sa'adah, in both of those places, I saw it. He says that the thing Allah pours in it, number one, is the Quran. You become, you're holding the greatest thing, which is the words of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from the people of the Quran. Now we have learnt the, uh, the importance of the heart. Sahab brothers, now I'm going to move on to the rights that the heart has on us. Before I move on to the rights. Let's see who was listening. Yeah? Hey, yeah, number one. What was the first point I mentioned of the importance of the Quran? Eh, sorry, the importance of the heart. Hey, I choose, I pick, I pick, I pick. The brother right over the back. No, you, you look, don't look back. No, no, no. Yes, naam. And, yeah? The first importance of the heart. What is it? The heart is the king of the body, correct? MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. So we've done the right side. Hey, now we go to the middle. Hey, somebody from the middle. Hey, put your hand up. Hey, fadl, hey. Huh. The second point I mentioned of the importance of the heart. The Quran settles in the, in the heart. So it's a place where the Quran is in. Hey, number three. Hey, we've done middle. We're going to move into this area. Hey, barakallah fiqh. Hey. It is what Allah looks at, subhanahu 
wa ta'ala. Good. And here, some, we're going to come to the side, just the people here. Yeah? Fadal. The intention comes from the heart. Hey, yeah. Last but not least, hey, yeah. Mahalu taqwa, mashallah. The heart is what? And then, mashallah, the people on this side now. Last the last. Hey, yeah. Fahim, last but not least, that I mentioned that the, the importance of the heart. The qalb is the aniyatullah, is the vessel and the utensil Allah tabarak wa ta'ala puts things in, subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make our hearts that aniyah, where Allah pours good in it. Now we're going to move on to the second part of the lecture, and it's inshallah wa ta'ala going to be about this heart, is that which is which is that important, okay? Is that is very important, right? What is what what are its rights? What do we need to do for this heart? Then it's very important. We realize its importance and its weight. Now, what do we need to do for the heart? Number one, the first rights it has is, and you zayinahu bil imani wal amal salih. You beautify it. You adorn it. What do you adorn it with? First of all, Iman and Amal Salih, righteous actions. So Iman, Amal Salih. And Allah mentions it subhanahu wa ta'ala in what? Surah Al-Hujurat, which we took in the morning. Inshallah, Shaykh Jamal read it for us. Which is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَا Allah says, يَا إِلَّذِينَ آمُنُوا إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَئٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا أَن تُصِيبُوا قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَةٍ فَتُصْبِحُوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ وَعَلَّمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوْ يُطِيعُكُمْ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ لَعَنِتُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانَ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَكَرَّهَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِصْيَانَ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الرَّاشِدُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَنِعْمَةً This shows what what, do we, what does I say? وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ To adorn in your heart what? Iman, Iman and what? Amal al-Salih Righteous action Are we all together brothers? And based on this ayah It was known from the dua of the Prophet was اللَّهُمَّ حَبِّبْ إِلَيْنَا الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيِّنْهُ فِي قُلُوبِنَا فِي قُلُوبِنَا The Prophet said وَكَرِّي إِلَيْنَا الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ والعصيان. The Prophet used to say this was from his dua alayhi, alayhi salatu was salam. Are we all together brothers? So the first right is that you adorn your heart with what? Iman. You iman and amal as salih. The second rights that the heart has inshallah ta'ala everyone bi'nillah al-kareem write it inshallah uh, ta'ala. The second rights that the heart has inshallah ta'ala is You give importance to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran. Not music, lyrics and yeah. Memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you beautify your heart, which is another way of beautifying your heart, with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we took before, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍ مُبِينٍ The Quran is what? It's what has to be in your heart. That's what Allah said in the ayah, Ya ayyuha al-nasu qad ja'atkum maw'idhatun min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi suduri wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. Sah? Are we all together? These are ayat which are mutashabiha in the Quran. This is wa hudan wa rahmatan wa rahmatun. Huh? Ya al-Quran. Be careful. Wa rahmatun lil mu'minin. Sah? So it comes a lot of places in the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? Pay attention here. Bidni lahi al kareem. So the Quran is what? It's what? Shifa ulima fi sudur. Are you feeling re reduction in your iman? Maymun ibn Mehran. What did Hassan al Basri recite for him? Words of the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? And it affected his heart. So they make the Quran a place that's, yani, you memorize the Quran. That's why from the dua that the believers make, and it's called Sayyid al-Istighfar, right? Who knows the dua Sayyid al-Istighfar? Hey, hey, Jamil, hey, Manchester is amazing. Allah Mubarak, Mr. Furqan, hey.
This is one of the things of Jazakallah khairan and Barakallah fiqh Amar, mashallah. So this is one of the adhkar that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, again in his kitab Al-Wabil al-Sayyib, mentions in great details, it has an effect on the heart. Are we all together? Also from the dua is that the Prophet used, Allahumma inni abduka, hey? Allahumma inni abduka wa abnu, abdika wa abnu amatika, nasiyati, hey help me brothers, nasiyati, biyadika, hey? maadhin fiya, hey? adlun fiya, qadauk, hey? أسألك بكل اسم هو لك يا سميت به نفسك يا هيا أو أنزلته في كتاب أو علمته أحد من خلقي أو استأثرت به في علم غيبي أن تجعل القرآن this is what the power I want from it ها أن تجعل أن تجعل القرآن what do you want from the Quran ربيع عقل are we all together a lot of people they say ربيع قلوبنا as plural because ما شاء الله تراويح and all of this is the beauty صح Mashallah, very important. So do you see brothers here, what do you say? Rabi'ah? Qulubina, our hearts. So we want the Quran to be what? Rabi'ah qulubina. Sah brothers. That's very important that we, we understand it. Number three, the third right. Before I move on to the third right, I want to go into the first two rights. Hayyah. Hayyah. The brother at the back. At the back. What was the first, Mashallah, Iman? And amal salih, righteous action. MashaAllah, Allahumma barik. You guys are focused, huh? Very good. So inshaAllah ta'ala, what I want from this is that we leave, inshaAllah ta'ala, it's not just a lecture you listen to. You left with points, action plan. So when you go, inshaAllah ta'ala, you can act upon this. Bidnilahi al-kareem. This is what the aim is, inshaAllah ta'ala. May Allah make it a source of benefit for all of us. Hayya, the second, inshaAllah ta'ala. Hayya. The brothers on this side. Hayya. Hayya. Fadal. The second rights that the Quran has on us is what? The heart. Yeah? The Quran and how important it is for our, our hearts. Number three, inshallah ta'ala, which is the general remembrance of the uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla. Yani, the dhikr and the adhkar. A lot of the people forget this, but it has a very powerful effect on the heart and it's from the rights that the heart has on you. You're, I always say this to myself a lot, and I remind myself a lot. If you don't drink and you, you, you avoid drinking water, what would happen to your body? Dehydrate. You will dehydrate. If you don't give dhikr to your heart, your heart will dehydrate. Does that make sense, brothers? And the outcome of that dehydration is suicidal thoughts. Does that make sense? So you're, 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 you're stopping your heart from what? from what it needs. Ibn Taymi, on the other hand, he gave another better example. He said, the fish, does it need, does the fish need the water? If you take a fish out of the water, what will happen to the fish? The fish will die. Ibn Taymi, rahimahullah, he said that the heart, the dhikr for the heart is like the fish for the water. Now we all together. If you don't give the heart that dhikr, what will happen to it? It will die. Are we all together, brothers? And a very good book on the issue of hearts and everything is the Kitab Iratatul Lahfan fi Masayid Shaytan by Ibn al Qayyim. As soon as he starts the book, he categorizes the heart into three. Are we all together? He categorizes what? The heart into three from the Quran. He brings it from the Quran. Qalb, which is known as Qalb, which is Salim. Salim, the second one, Qalb, which is Marid. And the Qalb, which is Marid, is the heart which is sometimes alive, sometimes dead, is suffering, but it's, it's not. And there's the third one, which is Qalb, which is Mayit, dead. So I encourage you, if you can read the Arabic language, to read this kitab, Iratatul Lahfan fi Masaid al Shaytan. It mentions a lot of things. And that's why the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he mentions to us, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيْتِ the one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't remember Allah is like one who is dead and one who is alive. There is another wording of the hadith which says مَثَلُ الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي يُذْكَرُ اللَّهِ That's, There's a wording and also there is without the mentioning of the house. Are we all together? So what, what dies? Is it the first person is dead straight away? Is that what it means? It means your heart is dead. 
Are we all together? So the dhikr is also the rights that the heart has on you. Number four. Number four. The fourth right that the heart has on you. And that is, you work towards softening it. You work towards softening it. And what are the things that soften the heart? The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam. From the things that the Prophet mentioned, we already mentioned dhikrullah. It does do it, but we want to, each one winner. The Prophet said, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al quburi fa innaha. Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al quburi Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarati al quburi fa zuruha fa innaha tudakkirukum bil akhara. Another wording added onto it, wa turaqqiqu al qalbah. That's the wording I want from the hadith. It reminds you of the hereafter and it will soften your heart. Are we all together, brothers? So go into the graveyard and visiting the people who are in the graveyard and looking at them and remembering one day, this is going to be your what? This is going to be the place that you're at. And it was mentioned, Uthman radiallahu anhu, they said, uh, if he stood over a graveyard, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he'll cry until his beard would be filled with tears. And they said to him one day, they even asked him, they said, Uthman, tudhkaru jannatu wa nar, jannah is mentioned, nar is mentioned, fala tabki, you don't cry. Wa tabki min hadhi, you cry from this? And I, he said, I heard, sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqul, al-qabr, the grave is what? Awwalu manzilin min manazili, al-akhirah. I, I, I came, I, I, I heard from the Prophet that he said that the grave is the first stage from the stages of the word Akhirah. And if the person makes it in the grave, فما بعده أيسر منه. Everything after that is easy. Are we all together, brothers? If you make it in the grave, everything after that is going to be good. And if you lose in the grave and you fail in the grave, everything after that is going to be hard. Ibn Samak, he said one day, he stood over the graveyard and he stood right over it and he said, لا يغرنك تسكون هذه المقابر Do not let it deceive you. The calmness of these graves, how calm they are from the top. Because underneath it, on the other hand, there are people who are being punished and it's a pit from the pits of the hellfire for them. And another group of people is a garden from the gardens of Jannah. فَمَا أَشَدَّ تَفَاوُتَهُمْ The variation, the, the, the position each one is in underneath is different from what it looks from the top. The top, it just looks like they're all just in their grave. صح? وَلِذَلِكَ The previous nations, يعني, sorry, the previous uh, Imams, يعني, the Salaf al-Salih, they used to get ready for that day. The poet, he said, يُمَثِّلُ ذُ اللُّبِّهِ يُمَثِّلُ فِي يُمَثِّلُ ذُ يُمَثِّلُ فِي لُبِّهِ يمثل ذو اللبه في لبه مصائب قبل أن تنزل فإن نزلت بغتة لم تروح لما كان في نفسه مثلا وذو الجهل يا من أيامه وينسى, وينسى مصارع من قد خلا فإن دهمته صروف الزمان ببعض مصائبه عولا They would go and they would sleep in the grave Imagine they dug a grave in their house or outside somewhere and they would lie inside it and when they lie inside the grave they would sleep there and they would say to themselves they are what? They are rehearsing the inevitable. They're getting ready for the day when it comes. That's what the poet here is saying. He's preparing himself for that inevitable day that is coming. So that when it comes in reality, and it really comes his way, guess what? He's ready. He rehearsed it so many times. He's prepared. He's ready for that day. So that now when he comes, He's ready. So that's why going to the grave is a way to remember where your ma'wa and your mustaqar is going to be. You're decorating a house, you're going to spend, what, 60, maybe 70 years? Your lifespan is between 60 to 70, little go over it. So you're not going to live here forever, are you? So you're decorating this house that you're living in, this building and stuff like that. And you're forgetting the real house that you're going to be in, which is your grave. And the house which is the akhirah. You're not decorating that with anything. Are we all together? That's why some people, they don't want to leave this world. Are we all together? Why do they not want to leave this world? 
فلا ي... السلف they used to say لا يريدون أن ينتقلوا they don't want to أن ينتقلوا معن. they don't want to leave a place where they built and they worked on it and a place where they destroyed and they littered صح humans don't want to do that so go into the graves brothers world what فَإِنَّا تُرَقِّ الْقَلْبَ وَتُدْمِعُ الْعَيْنَ وَتُذَكِّرُ بِالْآخِرَةِ It will remind you of what? It will remind you of Akhirah. The fifth, inshaAllah ta'ala, writes that it has on us is that we distance it from sins. Less distance from our hearts, sins. As I mentioned to you before, brothers, sins will darken your heart. And shaitan, there's three things he needs to achieve. And he does it in this order. The first thing he does, he starts with sins. If he succeeds in that, he takes you towards bid'ah. If he succeeds in that, he takes you towards shirk. And those three are what he wants. He takes you from shahawat, which is sins, and the last two, which is bid'ah and shirk. Both of them are what? Shubuhat. So the person is desires. Desires, desires, desires Fulfills it so much Now the desires becomes doubt Are we all together brothers? It started off as sin yani Desires And then it now moved on to uh, 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 yani Doubt He's actually saying to you I'm questioning this ayah I'm questioning this hadith Are we all together? So what do you protect your heart from brothers? From sins Because the sin when it hits your heart the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time, what happens? It gets numb. It gets what? I remember I used to work at my father's, uh, my father used to have an internet calf. Okay, this was 15 something years ago. I used to work with my father. So some people would come into the uh, internet calf and sometimes they would watch indecent things. They would watch it and we'd have to take them out of the place, say, look, you have to leave. But every time I came and I saw them, I used to vomit. I used to feel lightheaded. See, because I can, the screen is facing me. But I would ask myself, why do they not feel that way? Why do they? Why don't they feel that same way? Why can they watch that stuff? The fitra changes over time. The fitra changes what? I wish it was, that was caught on video. <laughs> the way some brothers, mashallah, jumped. <laughs> Allahul <laughs> Musta'an. <laughs> so the fitra, it gets, the fitra, jazakallah khairan. The fitra gets affected, brothers. And when the fitra gets affected, the person, as I said before, he doesn't recognize the good, nor does he recognize the evil. So when you're talking to him, he just cannot relate to what you're saying. And a lot of us have seen people like that, sah? The reason is because the Prophet told us in the hadith, مَا مِن مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا وَهُوَ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ And we know the hadith of Iyad ibn Himar al-Mujashi'i رضي الله عنه, the same thing as well. Hadith Sahih Muslim, sah? The person is upon the fitrah and then what taints the external factors? We know now What's happening with this uh, new movement where people say gender and all this stuff? Huh? This is something that doesn't go with the what? The fitrah. What happened? What went wrong? The, the black dot at the beginning. Are we all together, brothers? The black dot at the, at the beginning. And now it's become, it's reached a point where you can't even have conversation with each other. It was shahwa at the beginning and now it's what? Shubha. Are we all together? I once had a conversation with one of them. I said, hey, what about Lot and the story of Nabilahi Lot? And the people of Lot. He goes to me, it was rape. The issue of Lot and his, his nation is rape. That's why they were destroyed. They raped the men. Not because it was the same gender. Then you remember what the scholars mentioned. It becomes a what? Shahwa to Shubha. Are we all together, brothers? And then the way to protect your heart is the beginning. Protect it from what? Sin. Don't ever belittle a sin that you do. Don't belittle it, right, brothers? These topics, brothers, is, in, is the foundation for the whole entire problems that you guys are facing. Are we all together? 
We need to deal with problems from the foundation. This is the problem. The heart has not been given its rights. When the, it's not been given its rights, it does all sorts of things now. It goes all over the place. It does nonsense. It acts in ways that are... Because you're not treating it the way that it should, uh, sh uh, you should have. The sixth, inshallah ta'ala, rights that the heart has is... You have to protect your heart from the illnesses that the heart can go through. There are things that can affect your heart. Illnesses, amrad, you need to protect them from them. Like hasad, jealousy. Are we all together, brothers? Amradul qulub, things which are illnesses of the heart. You need to protect your heart from those things. Some people, they take it very lightly when those things come. And the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم وأخر المسلم لا يظلم ولا يقضل ولا يحقره Are we all together brothers? So, so you protect your, your, your heart from this stuff. A brother sees another brother, Allah has blessed that brother with mashallah wealth and Allah has given him dunya and you just are jealous. Or you see a person, Allah wa ta'ala gives, gives him knowledge and he has knowledge more than you do and you have jealousy towards them. Or you see somebody, Allah has given them acceptance in the community, they've got maqbul amongst the people. And you see that and what do you do? You want to put them down. وَهَكَذَا This, this is going to be brought out يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَوْمَ يَوْمَ تُبْلَ السَّرَائِرِ The day when the secrets in the heart will all come out. Don't worry, you can fool the people, but you cannot fool who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala All of this will be brought Will be brought to Yawm al Yawm al Qiyamah Allah says يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنُ وَمَا تُخْفِ الصُّدُورِ So you need to protect your heart From those things That are أمراض القلوب I can't go through all of them But you need to study What those things are These illnesses of the heart I'll take the questions at the end Inshallah ta'ala The seventh Inshallah ta'ala And final Is The heart needs knowledge do you know what the knowledge is for it? It's a satnav. Directions, how do you go? What, where do you go? In order to know 24-7 what you need to be doing, you need knowledge, right brothers? You need knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, you're going to what? You're going to go about things in the wrong way. You're going to what? Misdiagnose the heart with the wrong thing. Sah? When I take my car to the garage, one of the things I really wish is that I knew something related to cars. As if the guy tells me we need to change the engine, we need to change this, I'm just like, okay. I don't know what he's telling me, if it's true or not, I'm taking his word for it, sah? So he can give me a wrong uh, um, uh, quote, he can do whatever he wants to my car, he can actually put an old thing in there and take the good one out of my car, sah? Sah, brothers, that can happen, right? Or is that sort of done? <laughs> not in the UK, that's not sort of done. <laughs> But do you understand, brothers? So this right now is what? It makes me want to know, um, yani have the knowledge and understanding. So having knowledge, brothers, is good for your heart. Al-ilm, al-shara'i. That's what Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاء The people that heart has real khashya in it are who? The people of? The people of knowledge, those who have what? The understanding of the, the religion. So those seven, inshallah ta'ala, I believe inshallah ta'ala, they are the rights of the heart of Ibn al Karim. I hope that I have given you guys, inshallah ta'ala, benefits. Anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.